All right. Buckle up, everyone, because today we are diving deep, deep, deep into German grammar. That's right. Adverbial phrases, to be precise. And I know, I know, grammar may not sound like the most thrilling topic. It's not everyone's cup of tea. But stick with us, because these phrases, I'm telling you, they're like secret codes. You crack the code and you unlock a whole new level of fluency in German. You'll sound so much more natural, more expressive. Like you've been living in Berlin. Okay, so adverbs, we know what they do, right? Right. They modify verbs quickly, like she ran quickly. Exactly. Pretty basic. But German adverbial phrases, that's where things get interesting, our notes say. Oh, yeah. It gets way more nuanced. It's not just how someone did something. Right. You can express how long, how often, in what manner, all those juicy details. Okay. Now you've got my attention. So we're talking beyond those simple adverbs, those single words like, uh, nicht for not, or what was the other one in the text? Gern. For gladly. Gern, right. <laughs> Short, sweet, to the point. They get the job done. But then we level up to phrases. Okay. And yeah. things get really interesting. For instance, did you know German actually uses nouns in the accusative case to describe how long something takes? Now, the accusative case, it's been a while. Remind me what that is again. Okay, so the accusative case, it's how a noun changes depending on its role in the sentence, right? Okay. So if you take the example um, from the text we have here, Das Kind malte die ganze Zeit Bilder. So the, this, the child is painting pictures all the time. Okay, I see it. The yeah. ganze Zeit, the whole time. That's in the accusative there. Yes, exactly. In English, we would say for the whole time. But in German, they use the accusative case to get that duration across directly. So it's not just that they were painting, but they were painting that entire time. I love that. I love those little differences. It makes it so much more vivid. Yeah, and immediate. Like yeah. you're right there. Okay, so that's time. But what about those adjectives that become adverbs? I saw that in the notes, too. Oh, yeah, that's another fun one. German makes that delightfully straightforward. Uh, Often you just use the adjective, as is. No need to change a thing. Really? Yeah. No, uli, like in English. Nope. Take the word schnell, meaning fast. It could be an adjective. It could be an adverb. Depends on the context. We want to say faster, smeller. No extra syllables required. Okay. That is nice and simple. But how do you tell if it's an adjective or an adverb, then, if they look the same? That's where German word order comes into play. Yeah. And also whether or not the adjective is declined. Oh, right, right. Those little changes to the end of the word. Exactly. So the text gives this great example. Schrecklich. <laughs> if you say, ein schrecklich hoher Berg, you're saying an awfully high mountain. But if you change it up, ein schrecklich hoher Berg, now it's an awful high mountain. Okay, so in the first one, it's modifying high, so it doesn't decline. But in the second one, it's directly describing the mountain, so it needs that declension. Okay, I get it. It's all very logical. Cool. And what about this Erweiss ending I see here? That sounds very, um, very German. Erweiss. You're right to be curious. That little suffix, it can really spice things up. Mm. Okay. It's like you're adding a whole other dimension to what you're saying. So take an adjective like lustig. For funny. Lustig. Okay, got it. Someone telling a good joke, I imagine. Right. But then add that air vice mm -hmm. and it becomes lustiger vice. Now, you're not just saying something is funny. You're making a comment on the whole situation. Oh, I see. It's like adding a funnily enough or it's funny, that kind of vibe. Lustiger vice. I like it. Adds a little something extra. And our text had that example comparing er hat lustig gesungen to er hat lustigerweise gesungen. Subtle, but it changes the whole feeling. Exactly. That's the beauty of it. You're not just speaking German. You're speaking it with a certain yeah, flair. Flair. I like that. Okay, so we've got those single word adverbs. We've got adjectives doing double duty. What else do our notes say about these adverbial phrases? Well, we can't forget about prepositional phrases. Right. Prepositional phrases. Those are pretty basic, right? Preposition, a noun. They are fundamental, sure. But in German, they're anything but boring. You can use it to talk about location, obviously, but also how something's done, even when something happens. Oh, yeah, I remember this. It's all about the case of that noun after the preposition, right? Accusative or dative. Yeah. One little ending can make a world of difference. Huge difference. In our text, there's that example um, comparing ich schlafe im Haus, I sleep in the house, mm -hmm. with ich schlafe ins Haus, I run into the house. Right. Right. Same preposition, totally different meaning. Case makes all the difference. It's like you're either inside or you're going inside. Just that subtle shift in meaning. It's so cool. Okay. Prepositional phrases. Check. What else is hiding in these notes? I see pronominal adverbs. 
Those sound a little intimidating. Pronominal adverbs. They sound fancy, but they're actually really useful, especially in spoken German. Okay, good, because that word pronominal always throws me off a little. Think of them like shortcuts. Instead of using a whole prepositional phrase, you just use one word to get the same idea across. Oh, like when you're tired of saying on the table, so you just say on there. Exactly. So instead of eftem tisch, on the table, you just say da lauf, on there. Or another example from the text, um, da mit. Instead of mit dem Flugzeug, buy it for biplane. Handy. I like it. Okay, those are good. Yeah. Pronominal adverbs. Got it. Although, you know, when it comes to German grammar, it doesn't shy away from complexity. What about those adverbial clauses our notes mention? Those sound serious. Adverbial clauses. They're the heavy hitters of the adverbial world. Oh. But don't let that scare you off. They give you so much power and flexibility in your German. You can describe things in more detail. You can explain why something is happening. Okay, so we're talking about those longer sentences, the sentences with multiple parts. I get it. Exactly. And our text had that nice example. Ich ging nach Hause, während die Sonne unterging. So that's, I went home as the sun was setting. Okay. That little clause there, während die Sonne unterging, it just adds so much more richness to the sentence, don't you think? Yeah, I can practically see the sunset happening. It's not just about stating a fact. It's about painting a picture. Yes. And those clauses, they can do it all. They can talk about time. They can talk about cause and effect. They can express a purpose, conditions. Our, our text even says that they can even replace other adverbs entirely. Hold on. They can replace other adverbs? No, that's just showing off. What do you mean by that? So let's say you wanted to say when Willie Brandt was chancellor, you could use an adverb like dummels back then and then add the phrase. But you could also just use the clause all's Willie Brandt Bundeskanzler war. One clause, all the information packed in. Wow. Okay. That's impressive. I never thought about it that way. But I have to say, it's a lot to wrap my head around. It's amazing, though, how much depth there is to something we often just call, you know, grammar. It's not just about rules. It's like it's like having all these different tools to really express yourself. It's a perfect analogy. And just like any tools, the more you use them, the more comfortable you become. And that includes those simple adverbs we talked about earlier, like nicht and gen. Oh, right. We can't forget about those little guys. They're small but mighty. They may seem simple, but where you put them in a sentence can make all the difference. Placement is key. Absolutely. They often go right before the verb, and they can really emphasize what you're trying to say. Okay. Think about the difference between saying, like, ich gehe jetzt, I'm going now, versus ich gehe jetzt nicht, I am not going now. Ooh, the drama. That one little word just changed everything. Exactly. It's all about the nuance and the emphasis. It's amazing how much power these little words and phrases have, even the ones that seem really basic. Yeah, it's like each one is a little piece of the puzzle, and when you put them together in the right way, you create something really beautiful and meaningful. And that's what fluency is all about. It's not just about knowing a bunch of vocabulary. It's about understanding how to use those words to build sentences that are clear and natural and that really express what you want to say. I love that. So what do you say? Shall we try to put this all together now and take a look at a real-world example and see how these different adverbial structures work in action? All right, a real world example. I'm all for it. Let's see these adverbial phrases in their natural habitat. Okay, how about this? You want to tell someone, yesterday I went to the park to read because the weather was so nice, even though I actually had a lot of work to do. <laughs> Bit of a mouthful, but relatable, right? Totally. We've all been there. Okay, so how would we build that sentence in German using all the cool stuff we've been talking about? Let's start with the basics. Yesterday I went to the park. That would be Gestern bin ich in den Park gegangen. Gestern, okay. There's our temporal adverb setting the scene. And then in den Park begang, prepositional phrase. With in plus accusative case to show movement. Nice. What about the because part? How do we add the reason for this park trip? We bring in a causal clause because oh. the weather was so nice. That would be weil das Wetter so schön war. Weil das Wetter. Oh, right. And there's that classic German verb at the end of the clause. War. Exactly. It wouldn't be a German sentence without it. So far, so good. We've got gestern bin ich in den Park gegangen, weil das Wetter so schön war. Okay, but what about the even though part? That's where things get a little trickier, right? Tricky, maybe. But that's where those concessive clauses come in. Even though I actually had a lot of work to do, that would become obwohl ich eigentlich viel zu tun hatte. Obwohl there's our even though, and of course another verb chilling at the end, hatte. 
This is starting to sound impressive, but hold on, we forgot something. How do we fit in the to read part? Ah, good catch. This is where our knowledge of infinitives comes in handy. To read, in this case, is all about the purpose of going to the park. Yeah. So we would add um, zu lesen in order to read, basically. Yeah. Right after that, in dem Park gegangen Park. Okay, so the moment of truth. What does our masterpiece look like now? Our beautifully crafted German sentence is, Gestern bin ich in den Park gegangen, um zu lesen, weil das Wetter so schön war, obwohl ich eigentlich viel zu tun hatte. Wow. I mean, that's a mouthful, but it sounds amazing. It's a mouthful, yes, but it's grammatically sound. You've successfully combined temporal adverbs, prepositional phrases, a causal clause, a concessive clause, even an infinitive phrase, all in one sentence. I have to say, I'm a little bit impressed with myself right now. It really is like unlocking a code. Once you understand how these different pieces work, you can build almost anything. That's what makes learning a language so rewarding. And these adverbial structures, they're your key to going from, you know, just stringing words together to expressing yourself with real nuance and style. Absolutely. So to our listeners out there, my advice is don't be afraid to experiment. Play around with these different structures. See what happens. Make some mistakes. That's how we learn. And most importantly, listen to how native German speakers use these phrases in real life. Couldn't agree more. Immersion is key. The more you surround yourself with the language, the more natural it will all become. And who knows? You might even surprise yourself with how much progress you make. I love it. And on that note of joyful learning and pleasant surprises, we're going to have to wrap things up for today. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on this deep dive into German adverbial phrases and clauses. It's been a wild ride. Until next time, happy learning, everyone.